Hey everybody, Mr. Hayes here. Hayes is World of Math. We're going through some statistics today and we're going to pick up where we left off. We're going to still be talking about proportions, but we're going to talk about how to test them. And I believe I misspoke in an earlier video saying that we're going to do proportions with means. I apologize for that. So anyway, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to talk about testing claims. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to go through and say, all right, if a company says we have a 97% satisfaction rating, we can kind of test that and see if that's true or any of those other things. And we're going to go back to an example we did earlier in the year about me shooting free throws. Now, all these notes, link down below for these for the second part of Unit 6. All of these lessons are based off of stuff Stats Medics did. You can link for them there down below. Um, while you're down there, like, comment, subscribe, all that other good stuff that your favorite, you know, Mark Rober and those guys tell you to do. And maybe I can get to 300 subscriptions. I know. Goals, right? Anyway, so Mr. Hayes claims that he's an 80% free throw shooter to prove that his skills, um, he shoots 50 free throws and makes 32. So am I exaggerating about what I'm doing? A couple of things. Um, so first things first, you need to go through and describe what we're talking about. We need to describe the population. Where are we pulling the sample from? What is the sample? So my population is all the free throws um, I've taken. The sample is just the 51 specifically that we're counting here. The parameter is, I'm saying it's 80%. So it's the true proportion of free throws made. So we are going to assume, and we'll talk more about this down below, we are going to assume that the 80% is valid because we're going to say, all right, we're going to assume what this is going to happen until we disprove that it doesn't work. And then down over here, my sample, which is p hat, is 64%, because I made 32 out of 50. Okay. So from there, what we're going to do, and I apologize for my extra notes here. Um, I ended up recording this whole thing without any sound, because I forgot to hook up, put my headset on. So anyway, um, the two possible explanations of what is going on. The two things that could happen is either... I make 80, I, you normally shoot 80% and I had a bad day, right? That's the professional. You always hear that in the locker room. Well, what happened today? I had a bad day. Or I'm exaggerating. Now, these two things are called hypotheses, and we're going to formally say it this way. The null hypothesis is meaning that nothing's changing. It's the status quo. Everything's good. So you say H sub 0, and that is set to be the proportion, true proportion is 80%. Now, if we can prove that to be false, then you have this alternative hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis saying if this doesn't work, where, or what must be true? So in this case here, we're going to say that the proportion is less than 80%. Okay, And we're going to formalize all of this more in the next um, set of videos, but we're going to go from here. So to test a, uh, Mr. Hayes' claim, we'll assume, number one, that he is an 80% free throw shooter, and we're going to see what's the likelihood that I made 32 out of 50 shots. So to do that, we're going to do a simulation, if you remember that from before. So we're going to use a spinner. I would actually give you a physical paper spinner, and you guys would go through and spin it until and do 50 of them and count um, makes and misses. Um, I've linked a couple of uh, le uh, electronic ones down below if you'd rather use those. And again, there's a lot of them out there. What you want to be able to have happen is you need to be able to set it so that you've got 20% versus 80%. Or let's say if there's 10 spots, you're going to say these two spots are going to be misses and these eight, you know, eight spots are going to be makes. And it doesn't matter how you assign them, and you'll see how we're doing it. It just needs to be that that's the way it is. Okay, so down here, you're going to go through and do that 50 times, and you're going to write down what your sample proportion was, and then you're going to go through and do it again, so you will have done this twice. I'm going to show you my data from last year. I believe I've got, I had 20 kids in class, and I did one, so we have like a total of 41 samples here. And so after you do all of that, you're going to put it down in a dot plot. <clears throat> and so over here, notice my lowest one was 70%, my highest was 92%. And from there, I would have been right here. So it looks like we're missing a total of zero. And when I say missing total of zero, notice I have nothing down here. None of our results was as low as my 64%. Okay, And we'll talk more about that later and how we're going to address that. But it's just an interesting thing that out of 41 different pieces here, we don't have anything going on down there. Okay. So I'm going to move this up here so we can keep on seeing it, make sure that that's in. Now, remember when we did dot plots before, we were talking about what each one of these dots represents. And each one of those dots here represents the proportion of free throws made 
from a sample of 50 by an 80% shooter. Okay, so this is by the, so this is if an 80% shooter truly shot 80%, we could see a 92%, we could see a 70%. Um, we theoretically might see something down here, but I mean, we're going to kind of be like we talked about because of the normal curve. Most of them are going to be centered upon your percentage of or your proportion of 80%. Okay. Uh, next question goes through and asks, one student says each dot represents the proportion of free throws made out of 50 free throws shot by Mr. Hayes. Is that correct? Now, remember what we're going to go back to what we did here. Okay, we're assuming in my simulation, this right here is my null hypothesis. We are assuming right here, see, assume that I make 80%. We don't know if I make 80%. We're assuming that I'm making 80%. So for this to work, it you can't say it's me, okay? So we don't know if Mr. Hayes is really an 80% free throw shooter. So each of the dots represents somebody who we know is an 80% shooter. Okay, so that's going to be important there. So now going back to what we did up here, what percentage of the dots represented what I did? I got nothing. There was nothing in the data we pulled last year. Nobody was down by me. And now we're going to go from 64% down. So if we had anything down here in the 50s or the low 60s, I would count that. Okay. But we don't, I don't, so we don't. So I actually have zero out of 41. So that's a zero percentage points right there. This is actually my p-value. Okay. This is what you would get out theoretically. And we're going to talk about how to do this later. I mean, theoretically, what you're getting from a Z table or um, when you're doing your normal distribution. Okay, so that's going to be the percentage of stuff that we are seeing is going to happen. So now for here, interpret this percentage in context. Now, I ended up writing over this because I remember, remember I recorded without sound, blah, blah, blah. So the purple is typically what would normally be said by one of my students. So there's a 0% chance that Mr. Hayes makes 32 out of 50 or less free throws. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's not bad. The way that we end up saying this statistically to make sure that everybody is clear in understanding what we're saying is this. <clears throat> assuming that Mr. Hayes is an 80% free throw shooter. We said that before. We're assuming that I'm shooting 80%. There is a 0% probability that Mr. Hayes would make 32 out of 50 or less free throws purely by chance. What this does is this. Sets up basically your um, given. Okay, so if we kind of go back to geometry, this is your given, this is, this is the situation, the conditions that we're operating under. And what we saw, the 32 out of 50, couldn't happen. Uh, what's the probability of that? Zero. That is if we're doing it purely by chance. So if we're not seeing this, something else is going on. We're going to assume that I'm a much poorer free throw shooter. Okay. Now, based on your answer to eight, does the observed p hat value of 64 result giving convincing, does it give convincing evidence that Mr. Hayes is exaggerating? Or is it plausible that I could have been an 80% free throw shooter and just had a bad day? So what we say here, and this is going to be what we're going to write on the next video as we formally write all of this out and how tests works with a conclusion. We have convincing evidence that because Mr. Hayes is exaggerating because zero is less than 5%. So again, we're coming back to that 5% that we normally use. And it is unlikely that an 80% shooter would shoot that poorly, right? So that's how testing is gonna go ahead and work. We're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. We'll see you tomorrow. We're gonna to get a little bit more formal with this and we'll talk to you later.